out there, this is a new interview of rockvoicehq.com. And with me is Jeff, Jeff is on tour in Europe, and maybe you introduce yourself to the internet. Jeff Scott Soto, um, too long of a list of people that I've played with to <laughs> truly introduce myself, but started with Ingbay Malmsteen, somewhere in the middle. Um, I've done the Rockstar soundtrack, sang with Journey, a band called Soul Circus, and my longtime band Talisman, and now I'm working on a very long solo career, so. How you doing? Yeah. <laughs> well, great having you here. And um, I want to start with some basic questions. When you began to sing, mm -hmm. uh, was there something, uh, an obstacle you had to face, or uh, which was the one part you had to work on most? I, I never really had thought about it too much because um, I grew up listening to things like the Jackson 5 and yeah. uh, anything that was playing around the house. I listened to a lot of pop radio growing up, and I've been singing as long as I've been able to speak. So I would imagine since I was four or five I've been singing and as far back as I can remember singing like making it an effort to sing and do as as well as I, the things that I heard I would be eight years old. Okay. And even then that's what people actually recognize that I actually had a voice, actually had the talent to say pitch and sing in key and all that. So I've been singing all my life and I never really faced any optic obstacles aside of when my voice changed from obviously when you're young and you start hitting uh, puberty. Yeah. Um, Naturally, you're a tenor, you, you can sing all the highs and everything, and, and right when I was listening to the band Journey, which was obviously, Steve Perry was a, a very high tenor at times, I was finding it difficult to hit a lot of those notes at around 14. Not difficult, but that I had to push and strain to get them. And I was in a band with a, with a guy named Chuck Duran, who uh, is a guitar player, but he worked with another singer who used to sing with that head voice thing, and he taught yeah. me how to how to convert my real voice to my head voice without hurting myself, without pushing. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like a cross between falsetto and real voice where you can get the ah! yeah. where you're not, it doesn't hurt. You can do it all night, all yeah. day, all week, mm -hmm. and it's not going to kill you as opposed to, you know, if you got to ah! where you, yeah. you've been pushing it. Yeah, a lot of strain there. Yeah. So, um, actually, um, have you always sung uh, with belting, with shouting a lot, or is there um, always been this uh, mixed voice thing in your voice too for you? No, that all the shouting and belting didn't come until I started getting into hard rock or yeah. even started singing in hard rock bands yeah. or, or Yngwie Malmsteen for that yeah. matter. Um, I didn't get into hard rock music until much later in my life. I, 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 like I said, I always listened to Motown and soul music, R&B, mm -hmm. Earth, Wind & Fire to the Bee Gees to the Jackson 5 and all that stuff was my music. Even yeah. the dis disco era, I really loved that stuff. Um, and it wasn't until my brother started listening to bands like Van Halen and Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, and naturally you, you're always influenced by your older siblings, and I kind of followed him into that course. And he introduced me to a lot of that music just by him playing it all the time, and of course I hated it at first, but mm -hmm. naturally just started seeping into my bloodstream. And of course by the time I started singing with Ingrid Malmsteen at 18, I already had it in me that I could emulate that, that whole Ronnie James Dio, Bruce Dickinson yeah. kind of style. Yeah, and uh, talking about that style, um, you had a lot of great, a lot of rasp in your voice there. Mm -hmm. um, was it done on purpose, or did it just happen? So I, I luckily, and it's it's one of the gifts that I've been given by the the gods of voices. Yeah, um, I was always I always had this knack for emulating singers that I liked. Uh -huh. So even though naturally when I was younger I wasn't a raspy singer, I was always a very clean, uh, very smooth, clean tenor. It was very very nice, smooth voice. But when I started listening to the heavier bands, especially like ACDC and that kind of stuff, you can't sing that stuff that way, and, or, or get away with it doing it like that in a, in a cover band. So luckily, by the grace of God, I was given the, the gift of emulating these different vocalists, and I could emulate rasp and incorporate it into my own voice. Mm -hmm. As I got older, and as I realized I needed it to, to more of the hard rock sound and all that stuff, it was something that I incorporated naturally into my voice, mm -hmm. where I can turn it on and turn it off whenever yeah. I want to. There's a lot of singers that can't turn it off, and there's a lot of singers who don't know how to turn it on. Exactly. And so I was lucky enough to know when I needed it, it was there, and when I didn't need it, I could turn it off. Yeah. Okay, cool. Is that uh, a matter of placement, placing the voice, a um, uh, soft palate thing, or is it just a feeling for you? Uh, it's definitely a, uh, it's a placement thing, because obviously rasp is more of a throaty type of singing, yeah. unless you have unless you have a natural throat, like, and you're talking like this all the time, you're, you're naturally speaking with a rasp. And I, I have, like I said, I have a very clear voice, so it's something I have to twist, you know, I kind of have to turn it on. Uh, nowadays, as I'm older, it's easier, because as you get older, naturally the voice just starts coming down, it matures, my, my, my speaking voice now is a lot lower, it's like four or five pitches lower yeah. than yeah. When, in my 20s. 
So naturally, as I'm singing the high notes, it's going to come out a little raspier because I'm pushing a little harder. Yeah. But um, for the most part, it was always something I emulated and, and was able to control when I needed it. Was there, was there a certain time in your career when you when you realized, oh damn, I have to change something here. My voice isn't working the way it should. Absolutely. When I joined Journey, actually, that was the first uh -huh. time I had to actually change my whole mental, my, my the mental side and the physical side of how I was singing. First of all, the, um, the, I've always been a very healthy guy in the sense of mm -hmm. I'm at the gym. I'm constantly trying to you know stay in shape yeah. and keep everything in shape because I want everything to last for another 25, 30 years. But it's more so that I haven't been singing that tenor, clean, higher style it so in so long mm -hmm. that when I first got into the band, I struggled in the beginning of it. I've been working my ass off doing gigs on the weekends with uh, with this cover band, and I was in the middle of recording the last what turned out to be the last Talisman album. So I was basically singing for like two or three months straight with no breaks, and I got the gig. I went on the road with no rest, and I'm like, oh god, how am I going to get through this? Yeah. So yeah. my first three weeks with them with with them was a struggle. But uh, I had two weeks off before the next six-week leg, and during that time I took a, a week of vocal rest where I didn't yeah. speak, I didn't whisper, nothing. Yeah. And then the second week I slowly went back into speaking, and I also took a lesson with Steve Perry's coach. Okay. And mm -hmm. he, he kind of guided me back into my natural tenor without the strenuous, strenuous side, and also to, to make sure I was able to control it, yeah. you know, doing so many nights and doing such a long stretch of that catalog. Yeah. And so, yeah, just using his exercises, um, I, st I still warm up to that to this day when I have certain gigs where it requires me to sing up there. Mm -hmm. Luckily, with my gigs, I'm able to choose the set list, and if I want to clear down a bottle of vodka before the show, I know I can get through the show. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there anything you would want to give to the world for singers, for those who are interested in, in using their voice correctly, or just inspired by Jeff Scott? Absolutely. Um, one of the things I never thought I needed, or one of the things I never had, was vocal lessons growing up. Mm -hmm. Um, I, my technique always worked for me. It worked um, when I needed it. All, all, you know, anything I wanted, it always, thank God, it worked for me. Yeah. But it wasn't until I joined the band that was playing regularly two, or about three or four nights a week mm -hmm. for about five years straight. And I think I had two weeks off a year. And with that, with my untrained voice, I developed nodule uh, nodules in my throat, which I had oh, to have okay. surgery. Ouch. Yeah. Yeah. So. I'll go on the record to say, of course, I've had throat mm -hmm. surgery back in 2001, mm -hmm. and before I went into the surgery, my doctor, who's a very good doctor mm -hmm. out in, uh, in Los Angeles, he said, I won't perform the surgery until you've spent a month with a vocal coach who okay. can teach you the proper breathing techniques, to teach you, uh, to basically show you all the things that led you here into my office. I'm, I don't want to see you in my office. As much as this is what I do for a living, I don't want to see you back in here. Okay. So I spent a month of courses with, with her, and she basically just taught me how to use my diaphragm, all the things I was doing incorrectly, even the way I'm speaking. She okay. said, you, I could feel, I can, I, I can sense there was a tension in mm -hmm. your voice and how you're using it to speak, and so many yeah. little di different tips that I got to learn from that. And then, of course, I had the lesson with uh, Steve Perry's coach, which was completely different. That was more of a warm-up thing to get into my higher register. But I would encourage anybody who wants to do this for a living and is going to have longevity and to learn the proper techniques of breathing. It's so important. You have no idea how important it is because yeah. there's so many singers, some of your favorite singers, some of the world's cl class singers mm -hmm. that have gone down because of this. There are a lot of singers exactly. who haven't gotten uh, the, any kind of lessons or anything mm -hmm. like that. And it leads them the, the best in the world. Like, they can lead them to this tragedy of having to get yeah. a laser into your throat and having this little wart removed and it's not fun. Yeah, okay. So, thank you for being here or for giving me the interview and uh, good luck with the rest of your tour. Thank you. The last words are yours to maybe promote whatever you want to promote. Yeah, uh, why not? Uh, <laughs> I'm working on a new solo album. Uh, the next, I think it'd be my fifth solo album, uh -huh. and I'm hoping to get it out by the end of this year, 2011, if not beginning of 2012. I've been working with this huge group in the U.S. called the Trans-Siberian Orchestra. We're doing multiple tours now, and it's coming through Europe as well, which we just did back in uh, March we were here. So I'm busy. I'm on the road and doing my thing until April next year. No, maybe August next year. Okay. So I'm, I'm constant. I'm, I'm going and going and going. And again, I can't stress enough, you learn how to use your voice, and you'll get to use it for a long time. That's my only okay. words I can give. Best words for closing. Thanks and have fun on tour. Thank you.